right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today in the lab, we actually have the ASUS Z97A motherboard. This is a full-sized Z97 board, unlike the Z97I Plus that we uh, we showed you a little bit ago. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the box. We'll dive into the accessories that are in it, and then, of course, we'll dive into our walk around of the motherboard. The motherboard's got some interesting features, so we really like to get to that. All right, the box. It's got an interesting picture of their new... Uh, Chipset heatsink, five-way optimization. You know, we'll go into a little bit more detail on that on the on, in the written review, which is at the link right below this video. Flip it over to the back. You know, we have some explanation of the five-way optimization, dual intelligent processors. This is the you know fifth version. You have some other stuff remote to go. Kind of uh, ASUS pimping their uh, their cloud solution. Talks about Turbo App, Crystal Sound 2, Turbo LAN, and then of course you have a. A picture of the uh, Z97A with uh, the features noted on it, and that pretty much covers the box. All right, let's take a look at what you get inside. Of course, you get a manual. You have uh, another smaller manual that actually explains all of the exclusive features. You have a, uh, a CD that's or excuse me DVD that has all of the drivers and utilities. It comes with an SLI bridge that's inside. You have your SATA cables. These are the some of the nicer ones that ASUS has been putting in there for a while. You have your I.O. shield, and then of course you have your uh, your blocks that ASUS uses that gives you the uh, makes it easier to plug everything in. Like those, they've had those for a while. All right, so we've covered what's in the box, everything except for the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and cover that right now. All right, now we're going to take a look at the board itself. It is a standard size ATX layout. Uh, not really that much that's you know different on it. We've got some uh, different ASUS features on it that we'll go ahead and zoom in here and show you. Right, one of the first things we notice is that ASUS has actually marked off the area where the CPU is going to go or CPU cooler is going to go. So it's kind of nice to sort of block it out and make sure that there's nothing uh, on the surface. They've also added these cross hashes in so you know that this is where everything goes. You also have your four DIMMs, uh, you know, up to DDR2400 if you want to overclock. You have your USB 3.0, have 24 pin power connector, four pin uh, PWM fan header. Up here is an, uh, an interesting switch. That's actually an easy XMP switch. When you turn this on, it's going to go ahead and light up the uh, uh, whatever XMP profile is on the, the memory automatically, but you don't even have to set it up in the board. Of course, you have your MEM OK switch, which also has a DRAM LED that's going to light up, making you know, letting you know everything's OK. Um, you have another 4-pin uh, PWM header that's going to be the CPU fan. Moving around here, one of the things we want to point out specifically is the amount of clearance you have for this. This is one of the first times we've seen where any motherboard manufacturer is giving you that much clearance for this 8-pin uh, power header, the aux power header. We like that. Uh, it's a great uh, sort of departure from design. Most of the time these are right up against there and you're going to lose a little bit of knuckle skin. However, we do still recommend that you go ahead and get an adapter. Um, if you can get a nice sleeve one, it's just going to make your case look a little bit cleaner. Right, flipping around, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the PCIe slots uh, and a couple of regular PCI uh, 2.0 slots. So you're going to see a 1x, you have an actual full 16x, an 8x, and an 8x. So the way you can actually tell these is if you flip the board over and you take a look. You'll notice that here you have the full, all the pinouts are soldered in, here you only have about half. So that's how you're going to determine your mechanical versus electrical. They're 16x mechanical, but they're only going to give you 8x electrical. All right, now we're going to go ahead and kind of focus in on something here. There's an uh, M.2 SATA connector that's right here in the middle of the board, so it's going to give you that support here. We're seeing that on most of the newer Z97 boards. We do have one of those coming in uh, from Kingston, so we'll be sure to go ahead and run some tests on it once that gets in-house. Now draw your attention to something down here in the corner. We talked about this on the uh, Z97i Plus, but now we'll take a look at it a little bit closer here on the uh, Z97a, and that's the Crystal Sound. So this is Crystal Sound 2, and you'll notice these capacitors. Those are going to be great capacitors for an audio amplifier. They help adjust and modulate. You know, they help clean up the sound that you get out there, get out of this instead of having your normal capacitors. So that's what these are. They're not your old-fashioned style capacitors. They're actually intended for audio and it's a great choice by ASUS to go ahead and put these in there. All right, taking a look down the board, you actually have um, you know your aux audio right here. You have a USB or sorry a COM port. You have a TPM header, trusted platform module. You also have a power LED power switch. So that's a switch right on the board. You can turn things on and off. Um, 
You have a few USB headers, and of course your front panel headers are up here. You have a TPU switch, uh, an EPU switch that's right on the board. And then we're going to take a look at something kind of new. If you look at the way the SATA is laid out, you'll notice that it's laid out in sort of very different from what you're used to seeing. Most of the time they're stacked up in these rows of two. Here we have two that are down, and then of course we have two standard ones and a SATA Express. So that SATA Express, this is the first time we've actually seen that on a standard motherboard like this. So it's kind of a nice feature and something that ASUS has added in that's pretty interesting. Again, they've kind of started this trend where if you see it on their higher end boards, you're going to see it on their lower end boards pretty quickly. And again, you're seeing that across the board in the way that they're designing and the way that they're bringing things down, like the separation on the board for the audio. So this is where your separation is just for the audio, so that's actually segmented from the rest of the board to help reduce the amount of, you know, any kind of interference that you might get from the operation of the rest of the board. All right, so then we'll take a look at the I.O. outputs. Now again, sort of a difference in uh, design philosophy. They put all of the video headers at the top, then you have some USB 2.0 ports, uh, USB 3.0, your PS2 uh, port is here, again USB 3.0, Intel LAN, and then of course your audio outs are, are a little bit further down. So, so far what we're seeing here is a great uh, design. Again, you know, that departure from tr sort of traditional design philosophy is something that we like to see from motherboard manufacturers that sort of pushes the industry along. Um, this is a good job from ASUS. And with everything we're seeing, we would expect this to perform well, although there are always some possibilities that when you start deviating from traditional design and traditional layout that you're going to see some performance issues. We're not expecting that here, but it's something that we're definitely going to be take, keeping our eye on once we get to the performance side of it. So as always, if you uh, like this video, be sure to click on the like button, make sure you share it, and be sure to click on the subscribe button to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.